So how can we then use the P ratio effectively? So we tried our best to give you three ways how you can solve this problem of P ratio. Of course, we don't claim that these are the best way and these are foolproof, but uh, hopefully you would appreciate that these are much better way of looking at uh, investing because in investing, there is nothing called black and white. Most of the time it is gray and that is how we have to arrive at a solution. So for uh, three ways, uh, you can solve this PE problem is if you are investing for a max two to three year uh, horizon. So say for example, you are in, you are betting on cyclical companies or even if you are not betting on cyclical companies, but companies uh, that have uh, a long history of uh, track record, what you need to do is in, uh, uh, in case of uh, analyzing them is you should look at the last 10, 15 years of P and if you are getting those companies at a lower band of P and you believe that these companies are not going to go out of business and the, the, the compression of this P multiple has happened because of a temporary problem which is solvable, then you can bet on these companies. A very good example would be betting on a few travel companies during the COVID time, right? So the earnings were not there and uh, the market punished those stocks. So we are not betting there. So when, as an investor, when you invest in those companies, you're not betting on those companies to do really well for a long period of time. But what you are betting on, you're betting on mean reversion, right? You are betting on that market is probably very pessimistic about this co these companies today. But if I buy today, even though there is a lot of uncertainty, I don't know when uh, travel will resume, but since I'm getting a very good bargain, let's buy it now, right? That is one way of looking at P. The other way is when you have a horizon of five year or more, of course, you should try to buy at a conservative P based on the industry and business track record, but you should hold the stock until you see evidence of earnings growth tapering off. So again, uh, we would like to discuss the P PI industries uh, example here. Like if you see enough, again, let's clarify that it is not a recommendation, but how you should approach a business like P in the, uh, PI industry if you are already invested in that company or holding those stock is, you should not base too much, uh, uh, give too much value to the P ratio today, rather you should focus more on the earnings growth. Because if you see the last three, four years, the earnings have grown really at a high uh, rate. And that is how the P ratio has always looked uh, expensive when you compare it with the trailing earnings. But since the uh, projected earnings are much better than the trailing earnings, the stock has maintained its P ratio. Now, you should be you should be willing to hold a company or a stock like this if you see enough evidence that the company is doing all the right taking all the right steps to 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 give you that comfort of earnings growth in the future as well only when you get skeptical about the earnings growth vis-a-vis -vis the valuation which it is commanding then you should think of selling that stock and the last one is the most basic and the most easily uh, followed way of investing in market. But that, for that to, to follow that kind of an approach, you have to first admit that you don't want to base your decision based on valuation. And that is something which is, uh, which sometimes hurts the ego of our, all investors like us. We think that we know about valuation and why we want to buy in SIP form. I'll buy more of those stocks which are cheap and I will sell those stocks which are expensive. But our view is that it is much better uh, once you have done the analysis of business, analysis of management and say if you have come up with uh, 20 or 25 stocks which are there in your 
uh, radar where you want to invest in them. Our understanding says that you are much better off to keep on investing in all those uh, stocks uh, in an equal proportion month on month in an SIP form. Some would be trading at expensive valuation, some would be trading at uh, reasonable valuation. But if you just focus on the earnings trajectory of those businesses and management uh, pedigree and execution, you are going to do much better as an investor. Just to give you an example, we have talked about Infosys. Uh, it was trading at 200 times uh, earnings in 2000. Uh, it is today trading at 35 times uh, earnings. Uh, there's a there's a joke on Infosys which uh, does a lot of uh, which creates a lot of buzz where if you'd have bought Infosys at 2000 in the year 2000 and held on for eight years you would have made no money. But what we forget to uh, observe in those period is that even if you had started at the topmost uh, price of Infosys in the 2000 uh, mania and you just kept on investing an equal sum of money, uh, buying Infosys every month, you would have made a CAGR of 13% in those eight years, where just buying and holding the stock would have created zero returns. Had you done an SIP of an obscenely priced stock, where the earnings growth were continued to do well, you would have earned more than 13% CAGR. So that is the power of earnings and that is the power of SIP. Uh, we, we don't, uh, even after so many discussions and so many uh, webinars or so many videos which we see today on the power of uh, compounding and the power of SIP, we believe, we very uh, strongly believe that it is still a very underrated way of investing and uh, more and more investors should uh, probably look at it. 